Okay, so this is pretty cool. Uh, Daniel Archer made a uh, a uh, diagram here showing um, that the stars are born. Now, this is really cool. Like this, this right here. I think this is um, SN nineteen eighty seven A. I'm not sure, but. I think stellar birth looks like this. I think it looks really weird. And there's these bipolar outflows and it's really, really hot. And this central object in there is gonna be a white dwarf which will then expand greatly becoming a blue giant. And then as it loses heat, it cools. Its spectrum gets redder and redder and redder. It loses mass and it becomes like a, uh, this is like the sun right here. This is the A or B type star. I believe this is the O type star. This is the orange dwarf, red dwarf, brown dwarf, Jupiter, Neptune. I guess this would be like a uh, gray dwarf. Um, this is the Earth, Mars. That looks like uh, Mercury. And you have, you know, your moons and various asteroids as they, as they collide with each other. And they get chewed up by impacting a lot of other objects. Eventually, there's just asteroids and space dust, which then gets recycled back and becomes new star material again. And this material right here can enter in any one of these stages as well. It isn't strictly just the hotter, younger ones, but um, these bigger ones can collect more material. So, you know, because they're bigger, they have more surface area. And of course, the sizes of these aren't to scale, but they are, this is a good representation of. Um, what they, they what they would look like um, and in the center this is really cool I learned something new I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly but it's oral oral Euroboros I believe and it's a dragon or a snake that's eating itself and this is a symbol for eternity which is you know forever and that's the whole point is that the younger stars they um, collect the old dead star remains in they recycle them back, and this process continues on for a very, very, very long time. Essentially, it's an eternal process because, well, I don't believe the universe has an age. I think it's timeless, and that's as opposed to the dogma which states the universe has an age, which is really strange. Age is comparative. What exactly are you comparing the entire universe to to give it an age? It doesn't make any sense. The universe is eternal, but good job on you, Daniel. I put this to the bottom of this uh, of this page. And then here's something I wanted to explain to people. Um, now, of course, this is a very this is an MS Paint diagram, but and I didn't put numbers on there because the numbers aren't quite important yet. This is just to show that we have different ages of stars in our system. And it's to, it's to, it's, it's, it's very different than what establishment accepts, okay? So you have extremely young, extremely hot stars. This would be a very young one. This would be young, advanced to youth, old youth, middle-aged, old, very old, and extremely old. This would be like Jupiter's brown dwarfs, red dwarfs, orange dwarfs. And the sizes aren't to scale. It's just um, comparative with just words. It's very easy to understand that way. And this is the solar system according to stellar metamorphosis. You have a very young star in the center. It's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and then Neptune. These are very old, these are middle-aged, these are extremely old. But the solar system, according to dogma, um, they say, well, the sun is really old, you know, without any evidence supporting that assertion. And then they say, well, all of this formed at the same time. So if the sun's really, or extremely old, then, of course, naturally, a clock is correct twice a day, so yeah, well, Mercury is also extremely old, but that's 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 just luck on their part. Venus is extremely old, 
Earth is extremely old, Mars is extremely old. But then they go, well, yes, Jupiter is extremely old too. And so is Saturn. Uranus is extremely old, and so is Neptune. But I just have them as very old up here. They're not extremely old like the rock, uh, rocky remains of what was a very long line of evolution. And in the dogma, they have all evolved stars have to match the host star's age. So, in other words, it doesn't matter what these objects actually look like. It doesn't matter how evolved they are. It doesn't matter what their atmospheric compositions are, how strong the magnetic fields are. Every single distinguishing characteristic of these objects that are orbiting a much hotter, younger star is irrelevant. Because remember, they have all these objects forming at all exactly the same time, if not maybe a couple million years before or after or whichever, which is basically the same time. Especially when you have the sun as being four and a half billion years old. Unfortunately, this is false. The sun is not extremely old. It's very young. And we know this from the theory that I've been drawing up that other people have been working on too, Baz, Daniel, uh, a few others. I, I can't remember everybody's name, but we all know what's going on here. You have stars that are all different ages. And the fact that they orbit a very young one has been confounding the dogmatists for a very long time. And the reason why I wanted to write this out is because it's going to get very strange. And you'll see, I'll, I'll continue talking about this, but what's going to happen is they'll have stars that are four and a half billion years old, and then they'll have stars 11 billion years old, and then you have stars of five million years old, or 200 million years old, and they all have other objects orbi orbiting them. And it's going to get strange because then, okay, say they have, say they have something that's four and a half billion years old, they'll have, they'll have found a Jupiter sized object right here. And they say, oh, well, this Jupiter sized, Jupiter mass object is orbiting something that's four and a half billion years old, so that means, you know, they're equal in age. And then they're going to find an 11 billion year old object, according to their models. And then they're also going to find another Jupiter sized object and Jupiter mass and Jupiter diameter object. They say, oh, well, that Jupiter is also 11 billion years old. And then they're also going to find another star at 5 million years old. And guess what? They're going to find another Jupiter, Jupiter mass, Jupiter diameter, Jupiter uh, size object. And then they're going to find a 200 million year old star. So, oh, well, there's another Jupiter. Well, yeah, that has to be the same age as well. So what happens here <clears throat> is that you'll have a Jupiter here. It's four and a half billion equals 11 billion years. And then equals five million years and equals 200 million years. See, there's no, there's no difference. There's no evolutionary chain for a Jupiter inside of the dogma because it's all based on how evolved this object is in their weird stellar evolution models, by the way. And it was just also based on their weird idea that all of them have to match each other, which clearly they don't match each other. They're, they're different ages. Um, so things are going to get pretty strange over the next couple of years. Uh, I've been working on this for a little over seven years now, and I've come to the conclusion that they're not going to change their way. Hopefully, they'll see the, the, the ramifications of their assumptions and how much they don't make any sense. But, you know, it's, it's not up to me to, to change them. My listeners already know what's going on, and I thought I'd just elaborate a little more why this is going to be a very big problem in the future. Okay, guys, today is January 6, 2019. Everybody have a good day.